Hi, this is Adam from Makerstate, and right now we're going to go through part three of the Scratch boss battle. In this video, we're going to talk about ending our boss battle, which is going to include doing some checks on our player and enemy health values, and then when one of them goes below zero, we're going to do some things like changing backdrops, playing sounds, and writing some other scripts that are going to signify the end of our game. Okay? In the previous video, we created these two health variables, we wrote some scripts that made our uh, projectile attacks change our enemy health. They made them decrease it when uh, the projectile came in contact with one of our sprites. And we used these new cloning blocks to create the projectile attack for our hero. And just to quickly review what that looks like, we have both of our sprites flying around. We can shoot these projectiles with the space bar, and we see the healths responding accordingly. Okay? So now what we want to do is create some new backdrops to switch to when this game ends. So I'm going to click the paintbrush next to new backdrop, select the fill bucket, and black fill, and first I'm going to start by making a game over backdrop. So I'm making a black background just with some red text, I'm going to say game over, and I can make this a little bit bigger, like so, okay. So there's one of my backdrops, and then I'm going to make a second backdrop. Maybe I'll pick this one from the library. How about this one is good, and maybe when this one loads, I'll write with a text box, you win. And maybe I can use a different font here. Oh, that looks nice. Sure. You win. And then once I click out of that, I can make it bigger. Great. So now I have two backdrops to switch to uh, when the game, when the player either wins or loses the game. Okay? And you can you know, make these more or less customized. It's totally up to you. Okay. Now that we have this new backdrop, one thing that's important is making sure we start on the proper backdrop. So when this game starts, we want to switch backdrop to Castle 5. Let's see if we go back with our green flag, now we start on the proper backdrop. Now what we want to do is set up a loop. Oops, set up a loop that's going to constantly check the value of our player's health such that if it goes to zero or even below zero, we want to trigger one of those backdrop switches. So we're going to use one green flag clicked forever, if then, and if player health becomes less than one, then we'll trigger that backdrop change. And so you might be wondering why not just use one of these equals blocks so we can say if player health equals zero, but the truth is, is that it's easy for this number to actually slip below zero, so we want to use less than one instead to make sure we always catch it if our player health is below one or below zero, okay? So what happens when player health goes below zero? We're going to switch our backdrop again using one of these switch backdrop blocks. And in this case, we're going to switch to our game over backdrop, which is backdrop one, game over, and we will probably stop everything at that point. Stop all from control. Okay, so let's see. That looks like it worked right there, but if we just let our, our character get pummeled here for a second, we should see that backdrop switch. Good, there it is. Okay, so we reached zero and our backdrop switched, game over, that's it. Now we need to do the same thing for the enemy. So let's again go when green flag clicked, and forever, if, again we're going to use that less than one, this time if enemy health is less than one, we're going to first stop this other script that's making our dragon fly around, which we can do using a stop block. And we're not going to stop all, we're instead going to stop other scripts in sprite. We're going to stop the other scripts in this sprite, so mainly this one. Then, let's have a little fun with, with a little game ending animation here. I'm going to use a repeat block and repeat a graphic effect. So maybe graphic effects are something new to you, but this change, these change and set color effect blocks are very cool for creating different sorts of animations and graphic effects. I'm going to use a pixelate effect here, and I'm going to wait 
just half a second in between every frame, okay? And now we run this and we try to win. Okay, we reach zero. And we notice a few things. Here our pixelate effect is working, but our dragon is also still firing um, fireballs at us, and our game actually ended because of that. So let's just solve that right now. And for these fireballs, instead of this forever loop here, what we're actually going to do is say repeat until enemy health is less than one just like we do for the enemy's movement. We also want this to stop when enemy health is less than one. And we know that that pixelate effect worked, so that was pretty cool. And so after that's done, let's hide the dragon, and I'm gonna put this inside this if-then loop, not outside of it, so inside the if-then. And then we can switch our backdrop to our winning backdrop, our winter lights, our U1 backdrop. And then at that point, we can stop everything. So let's see how that looks so far. Okay, I won. So here we go. Dragon dissolves. Good. We see we have this fireball still left over here, so let's just throw another hide block on the end of this chain, which will make that go away, and then a show block at the beginning. That's good. And here we are. You win. That's great. And so one last thing I want to do for this project is add a little bit of sound to it, okay? And I'm going to add some sound from the dragon's perspective, just because it's in the dragon where we decide... Uh, when we win the game. So what we need to do is go to sounds, the sound tab from the dragon, and we're going to add some new sounds. And so there are lots of different sounds here. I encourage you to go through and listen to them. I already know which ones I'm going to use. I'm going to go to music loops and choose this techno song, and I'm going to click on it and then click OK. You can hear that quickly. Very nice. Okay. And I'm going to choose one more sound, and it's called... Triumph. Where is it? Here it is. Triumph. Great. Okay. And so then now I can use sound to play these uh, these different sounds. Now I'm going to take this block that says play sound triumph. And I'm actually going to start with techno. And then I'm just going to write a little script that says when green flag clicked, forever keep playing techno. Like so. And you see that this isn't really working right now. The problem being that when we play a sound over and over and over and over and over, it keeps starting so quickly that the song doesn't actually play. What we need to do is use this play sound until done block instead. And now, we have music working. Great. And now what I can do is when uh, the enemy health goes below one, we know that this is going to stop because we're going to stop all other scripts in Sprite, and then we can play our triumph sound. And let's see when we win. Now, sound plays, our backdrop switches, the enemy pixelates away, and we've won. All right, so that's going to be it for this boss battle. Feel free to try adding more sounds, adding more animations, adding more sprites and scripts to see how you can bring this project further. But that's going to be it for this Scratch Boss Battle Challenge. So I hope you've enjoyed these videos, and hope to see you at some of the next videos.